The following program is a special presentation of the Big Ten Network, produced in association with the University of Wisconsin. Uh, yeah, where? If you're doing, if you're doing <laughs> swimming, <laughs> swimming or track, yeah, seriously. That's what people do. That's Choir. gross. That's, that's hundredths of a second. Did you want to? Is that what you're getting? I don't think I can do it. I don't think I can do it. Okay, you guys, let's uh, let's talk about obligations for a minute. So, you know, as college students, our plates are really full, but a lot of people also say that we should throw in um, volunteer work in there into our, uh, into our working schedule. So do you think that we have more of an obligation to do volunteer work or to focus on our academics? I definitely think right now in college, your main purpose is academics. You can volunteer on the side if you have time, but like, Academics comes first. That's, it's no other question to it. This is what you're in college for. I, I agree with that. I mean, you're here first and foremost to go to college, to you know, do well, to learn. But I think that volunteering and getting involved in your community is is part of that education. And I think if you don't do that, you're really missing out. And especially, um, I mean, whether you're from, I mean, I'm from this this state, but even if you're not, especially if you're not, yeah. you know, to get involved and to really learn about other areas of the country. I was just going to say, I don't think the two are mutually exclusive necessarily. Like, yes, academics needs to take a precedence, and obviously we need to allot a lot of our time toward academics. But at the same time, you're going to be busy your entire life. We're always going to have jobs. Eventually, we're going to have kids. Like, we're going to have very full plates forever. I mean, someday. But let me say this, you though. You know, have kids, Andrew? <laughs> <laughs> let, me, let me say this, though. When, you, when, you, when, you, when we finally do graduate and we finally do get jobs, like, for the most part, you're off at 5. When you're in college, I have classes from 8.30 in the morning till 7 at night. Then I got to study all night. Then I have to go to work at night, later on that night. So it's like, my plate is already full. Then you're throwing extracurriculars. For sure, you're busy. Everybody is busy. But I just think that volunteerism is such an important factor of just being a part of a general community that we need to and we can find time um, to al allocate toward that. Do you think that volunteering now in college is important to sort of long-term service in the sense that you're, it's very hard if you don't do it regularly to just sort of start once you graduate? Oh, now I have time. I'm going to do all these volunteer activities. I'm going to make service sort of a part of my life. Exactly. It's a part of, I really think that you're making a great point, Jeff, and you need to be, make it something that you can embed into your lifestyle. It's not something that you're like, oh, I just do it, and you don't care. You don't just do it to build a resume. You don't just do it because your organization requires you to do it. Mm -hmm. You actually need to go out and find a volunteer opportunity that's something that's tailored <clears throat> for you, and I'll, I'll, I'll plug the Morgan Center here on campus, who actually really, really tries to go and recruit students to participate in so many different opportunities, from picking up trash on campus to going out with into the community in Madison. I think that students do need to engage in, you know, volunteering here within the city and on campus because it enriches your college, you know. So I think a related question is besides academics, what keeps students from volunteering more? I mean, I think we could point to a lot of different factors, probably social life being a big one, but what are some things that are, are keeping us from engaging? In the I would, community. I mean, I would say a lot of times I know I know people. You know, I'm, I'm not not. You know, they'll say I'm not involved in the club, so I don't really need to do that. There are plenty of clubs and organizations on campus that kind of do that. You know, mm -hmm. I don't I don't have the time to really devote to an actual organization to do this on a regular basis. So what's the point in me just doing it once or twice? You know, they don't. They don't want to put in the involvement. They, they feel like it's all or nothing. I think a lot of it, too, is just plain convenience. A lot of the places that we would think are probably better and need more volunteers are off campus, and people have trouble reaching those places, whether it's because they don't have a car, because the bus schedule is so crazy here, or whatever. I mean, there's a lot of different things that deter mm -hmm. people from volunteering, I think. I think peer pressure also. You know, I mean, we always talk about peer, pre peer pressure in high school, but I think in college it's the same way. And a lot of things, a lot of uh, causes people feel are politically motivated, and if their friends aren't doing it or their social circle isn't involved, then they don't really want to Speak be involved. Speaking of that, like what Meredith brings up is just the fact that most people, like well, at least, uh, how do I put this? Like in my life, I haven't seen a lot of people. <laughs> I haven't seen a lot of people my age when I was in high school. You know, actually get out there and volunteer in the community. You know, like we were kind of young and we were the people that needed 
volunteers to come and help us. So it's kind of hard when, you, when you're in that position and then you go to college and all of a sudden I'm supposed to be that person out here helping. Like, it's not in your lifestyle necessarily when you're in high school. At least it wasn't for me. Do you but, think there's really peer pressure though to, to not volunteer? I mean, that's it's not necessarily friends, like, maybe. well, if you volunteer, then we're not gonna be friends anymore. No, yeah. I'm not talking about that. What I'm talking about is we're talking about <laughs> the convenience, the friends, whole convenience thing. And, Pirates. No, exactly, no, but what I'm saying, <laughs> What I'm saying is, is that, you know, they're not getting involved, so, you know, there's plenty of other people I don't really feel the need to go out. Well, and then that means you're a those. follower. Yeah, you know, it's being a question. leader. No, being a leader. I'm saying, but Wait I'm a minute. Saying, being a leader, that's when you, you go out and you tell your friends, you know, this is what I'm doing. You take that initiative to go out and do it. I mean, if it's something, one thing I give my high school credit for, we had to volunteer in order. It was a part of our graduation requirements. I think that, and I think it was like 20 hours over four years. I mean, come oh, on now. If you can't do five uh, hours a year, you just. Jeez, that's I, low. Yeah. You know. Yeah. I mean, but that's a high that's school. That's nice, though. Yeah, that's no, get you started. But in reality, I think that the if it's if you're gonna if we're gonna use peer pressure, Meredith, as like a a, a a reason, I think that one you should challenge your friends. If you if you have it in your heart to do something, challenge them to come along because then they can see how. This program is a production of the University of Wisconsin Madison. If you have comments about this broadcast, please email us at programming at uc.wisc.edu. Oh, one, I know. One million yeah, that's seconds. because he shaved that day. That's why totally. he won. <laughs> that was it. That's why he won the gold. So we've been talking a lot about volunteerism and kind of if we think that we have enough time in it um, for our schedules. But what do we think about how volunteering actually helps us in the future? What about um, you know how volunteering can kind of shape what we want to do and who we want to be? I know that I've had a lot of. Um, volunteer opportunities, I had the privilege to go to South Africa as a freshman in high school. And it truly changed everything about what I want to do mm -hmm. with my own life. And um, I guess I personally just think that volunteering can shape so much of who you want to become and what you want to do that it can really influence your, your general idea of what you want to do with your occupation as well. Can I say something real quick about that? <laughs> I actually had the reverse kind of a, I mean, I had a reaction to a volunteer opportunity that I did, but I found out what I didn't want to do. Like, I came into school as an education major, so I said, okay, I'll go tutor some kids. Um, <laughs> and I went there and I started tutoring them and I said, oh my God, this is the last thing I want to do all day with the rest of my life is teach like kids. Like, I like being around kids, but to the fact all day, every day, and then eventually I want to have my own kids and I got to see those kids the rest <laughs> of the day, it's too much. But Mike, in essence, we're agreeing on something. From whatever kind of volunteer opportunities you have, you're always going to learn something from it. I agree. Well, no, not necessarily. You want so you want, you want what you want to do or what you don't want to do depends. or something about yourself yeah. from it. And that's yeah. why it's yeah. important. It's healthy nonetheless, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. You're sort of figuring out your own sort of course in life and that's about boundaries, right? So what you know yeah. what's something you're yeah, not I, interested I in as well as what you're interested in. And I agree in doing. with Alex and Mike that, you know, it's it's going to influence you one way or the other. And it's definitely important to do those experiences because if you don't, I mean you only learn so much from a book. You only learn so much from sitting in a classroom or sitting in the library or even group projects. But if you don't actually apply that and you know try and do it, you're not you're not learning nearly as much. So true. I definitely believe that volunteer volunteering is a trial and error kind of thing. Because I volunteered at a nursing home and I you know, I told my mom I called her that night and I was like, you know, praise the Lord that you are so, you know, kind hearted because I really was not feeling them old people. It was rude <laughs> and old and mean to me. And I just, you know, and I realized to myself, I could never be a nurse. I couldn't. I couldn't yeah, never. That's a tough job to that do. Is, you have to have a big like, heart to do that. And yeah. I just, I was glad I volunteered there, but I never went back. And all I was doing was painting fingernails. Mm -hmm. That's all I was doing was painting fingernails. Never you know about that? Yeah. You know, you, some people just can't help. But I also think that volunteering helps you appreciate more of what you do have. Mm -hmm. When you volunteer and you're helping people that, you know, in essence need something from somebody else, you realize what you do have in your own life and you're able to appreciate that more. And I think that, in, you know, that eventually kind of turns around and helps you realize more what you need in the future as well. Yeah, so I think going off of people volunteering and kind of learning a little bit more about themselves, you have to think about people who are actually volunteering to actually just path their resume, you know, to get a better job or to get an internship or trying to get into a classroom to show that they have experience in that area. So what do you think about people who are padding their resume? Well, here's the thing. Like, I, I've, I'm against, you know, just doing things so you can write it down in a resume later. However, would you call only volunteering in your field of study, you know, what you want to do. If you stayed with education, you only did tutoring, that was your only volunteering, would you call that padding your resume? Uh, well, I would think that that's strategic, a strategic volunteering where it puts you within that arena. <laughs> but if you, if you know that you're trying to get this job or this internship and they say you need 20 hours within this area, and you're like, okay, well, I'm going to just stick with this and I'm not going to go 
get canned goods for this food pantry. Is that a bad thing though? Like, I mean, it should come from the heart. What you do should, you know, come from the heart. Exactly, should. It should come from the heart, but I mean, in essence, when you volunteer, you are still giving your time mm -hmm. to help a cause. Mm -hmm. So, well, I think it, I, I agree. is I think, it not a win-win? Like, yeah. I think a lot of people volunteer knowing that it could sort of lead to something down the road. Um, either maybe prospect with a future employer um, or uh, other opportunities. But I think it, it certainly is, I think for some it comes down to more than just sort of the service component. Mm -hmm. uh, and I would say that, you know, people do it to set themselves, set themselves up for other opportunities. I think it's just sort of a reality of a lot of students today. But uh, and I'm not saying I'm not I'm not saying that's right. And I think people should want to do it for the right reasons. And that should that should be sort of leading motivation. That should be the leading factor. But I think just by virtue of the fact that we're all students and that where people are trying to get employed right after right. they right. graduate right. and exactly. going to graduate that's school, fair. it's it's you know it's a variable. Yeah, it, that's why it has to be strategic. That's like people going to the blood bank donating plasma. They know they're gonna get twenty dollars, and they know they're saving somebody's life, right? Yeah. You know, so they're in not the putting end. that on the resume. Are they? <laughs> donated blood, what? donated plasma <laughs> three <laughs> times this month, <laughs> made seventy-five dollars. <laughs> You made you save lives. You save lives. <laughs> but, but like Jeff, Jeff, you were saying, you were saying that you know that strategic kind of volunteerism exists, and it's you know it's a reality. And you said, I don't think it's right. Do you think it's wrong? I don't think. I think it's wrong if it, if you do it only for uh, the resume factor. I, I think. My I two bosses like from CNN both got fired because of that. <laughs> yeah. Well, they're trying to, yeah, consolidate and save money. So. Yeah. Well, we've been talking a lot about volunteering and whether or not it's a good thing to pad your resume. Well, we have hundreds of student organizations on campus, all of which um, at least claim to be doing a lot of volunteering. I'm not saying they're not. But do you think a lot of these volunteer organizations, do you think that they really do make a difference? Or is it just kind of to make the members feel good? about themselves. Oh, we're making a difference. And I think there's definitely both, but. I think we need to clarify, are we just talking about volunteering here? Or are we talking mm -hmm. about just the student organizations and what they're actually doing in general? Well, I think anything, anything that's, that, the, you know, they're volunteering or trying to make a difference, you know, a, a positive impact, not necessarily just, you know, promoting themselves, but actually making a difference and helping in the community. Okay, well, I can only speak to my own experiences on campus, but for one, the Greek system, I think, while there are obviously um, many components and aspects to the Greek system, volunteerism is definitely a very strong part of that. And I think that's obvious through the amounts of money that people raise and through um, all the volunteer hours that are put into different um, to different, you know, events. But also, I was just going to say that aside from volunteering strictly on behalf of um, people that, you know, obviously need it, um, it's just that student organizations have a lot going on, and I think that student organizations do influence um, not only like the political life, but so many different aspects of life on on the campus. Okay, well. I'm in a sorority, and I know that, yeah, there are a lot of people in my house, and our house in general, yeah, it does a lot, but there are a lot of people who are dragging their feet, and yeah. you have to really make sure that they do things, and they, a lot of times they don't want to, and they do it to either, like I said, make themselves feel good, or, put it on or the because they have to do it, or because they put it on the resume, and, you know, sorry, but that's just kind of how it is in any organization. And I know people in mine are probably very upset with me right now, but that's the way it goes. Like, I, 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 I think our house is very involved, or one of, you know, the more involved ones on campus. However, there are still those token people who you really have to drag along. I definitely agree with that. I think that here, we um, we do volunteer, but it definitely, definitely needs to be stepped up. And I don't see a problem with organizations doing volunteering just for doing it, just for, you know, the sake of volunteering. I think that's what the question was. Mm -hmm. Because not only does that help the community, but at the same time, it gets people introduced to, like, what volunteering is like, what you have to go through to volunteer. When you go to certain places to volunteer, you have to fill out waiver forms and background checks. So it gets you acclimated to the whole process. One thing I would like to see more is student organizations teaming up yeah. to work on right. projects. I don't I think we see enough of that. I mean, oftentimes they're in sort of their own box, right, performing their service activity, um, raising money, which is all great, but I think... In certain areas, they can make a much larger impact if they work together, form coalitions. Um, so a related question sort of is what contributes to, um, on campus, what contributes to the fact that uh, we're one of the leading universities when it comes to sending students out into the Peace Corps? Uh, I think for, I want to say 15, 17 years, something like that, we were number one um, and we're, we're still a leading university. But what do you think contributes to that? Is it that we have a really sort of strong, a robust uh, 
uh, group of student volunteers on campus, or is something else uh, a factor? I think that Madison being one of the, you know, we're ideally thought of as being very liberal. And so in that aspect, students are able to dabble in so many different things here on campus, which expose them to the, to the aid and the need that the world it, it has and it needs. So I feel that that probably pushes students into the Peace Corps, you know, wanting to give back after college if they didn't have the time, like we talked about before, to give back during college. And we also live, I mean, a few, a handful of blocks away from our state capital. And regardless if you're from the state or not, you can still get involved in, you know, lobbying or just working up at the state capital. And I, a lot of our politicians are very involved. Like I see our mayor literally taking jogs down the street almost every other day. So I mean, I think that we have all these different opportunities to get involved in all those different areas. But I think specifically to the Peace Corps, we need to look at it at more of an international perspective. Mm -hmm. I think that one of the things that the UW does a really good job of, um, at least in my experience, is that teachers constantly are trying to expose you to what's really out there, to what the real, not, I don't want to say the real world because obviously we all have different kind of perspectives on things, um, but we they make a they make a conscious effort to try and expose us to what other countries are and how other countries live mm -hmm. and kind of what's going on all over the world. And by doing that, it influences us, influences us more toward wanting to make a difference in, in those lives. But why Peace Corps? I think that's the question. Why? I think so. When he was started, Kennedy, I think, gave a speech to the University of Michigan, and it seemed to be, and I'm just kind of taking a stab at it, yeah. there seemed to be a big push among like large public universities to send a lot of students out into the core. And I think it, the program on Madison campus grew in lockstep with other publics like Berkeley and Michigan, and we just, I think now have, you know, over time have traditionally sent out a lot of people, and I think some students do it because there is that tradition on campus, right? Uh, and, and it is, it, it, help, it helps advance sort of your own international education beyond the classroom and after you graduate. Let me ask this though too, we send people to different nations to do that, but what about the people that need help here? This program is a production of the University of Wisconsin-Madison. If you have comments about this broadcast, please email us at programming at uc.wisc.edu. Waco! <laughs> <laughs> Well, we've, been, we've been talking a lot about volunteerism on campus, but here's something to think about. Volunteering, you know, I think of as being, well, you, you find a cause that you're, you're somewhat passionate about, and you go out and you actively search out, you know, things to do to help that cause. But do you think volunteerism should be required to graduate, like as part of the curriculum? Yes. Or is that kind of an oxymoron? No, I really do think that volunteerism should be, I, I'm not going to say like 100 hours into graduation, no. but I mean really like in high school I had 20 hours over four years, and I feel like I have friends who go to universities that are historically black colleges and they require those students to participate. One, because students of color are normally not, they don't normally volunteer, and they're normally not in that realm of service. And so they require those students to, I think, can do like 30 hours to graduation. That's a part of their credit hours. And it really exposes those students, one, to the community that they're on on campus and to the communities that they live within as they're there at their they respective universities. And it just enriches your you know, not just the resume, but it does look good on a resume because a job wants to see that you're a holistic person. You're not just a bookworm. You don't just go to work and go to school. You're actually, you actually can divide your time out responsibly. Now that you put it like that, I, I agree. Like, that swayed me. But, I mean, but do, they, do they get to uh, pick down. what they get yeah. involved with? They yes, choose? yes, okay. they, but they just have forms that, would be that have to fill out that, towards graduation. that I would think of is if they only have this list that, are, that they can get involved with or that are, you know, sanctioned by the university, what about all these other organizations and other groups and everything that need help? Now, what about a service, what about service learning courses where you have a volunteer component within a course that may contribute to a, a requirement? Is that, could that count? I mean, would that be a way to do it? Because I think it'd be difficult to require uh, all students on campus to, to engage in, a, in in some sort of service. I think it would be healthy, ideally, yes, but I think you would face some resistance. So what about going the service learning route? Sorry. Sorry, yes. no, I was just going to say, just going off of the first part of that really quick, um, one of the repercussions, I think, if we did mandate volunteering would be that advisors would have to get more involved and really try and provide a way for students to find those volunteer opportunities. Well, they don't have to do that here at this university. We got the Morgris Center. That's what their job is. <laughs> and and as, far as, as far as advisors getting involved, they need to know who you are because of the, in the end of the day, you coming to see this person about your college education, 
what are they there for? You're not just there to be like, oh, here's the packet, this is the class you might need to think about. They need to, they don't need to know your whole personal business, but a lot of times, that's why there are additional advising services for students like TRIO and AP. All right, everybody, it is time for Ooh. the famous <laughs> final words. So Jeff talked about this a little bit earlier. What do you guys think about service learning? I really, I've taken a couple of service learning classes here on campus, and I think that, to shoot back to the volunteer, you know, for as far as graduation requirements, I think that that would be a great way for universities who are pushing students to go out of the classroom to have that hands-on experience. I think service learning classes are great, plus you're getting the credit, but you're really getting that experience. So it's like a, So you, you know, agree with it? Yes. I think more service le learning courses. I've never had one. I wish I would have. I think it sounds like a great idea. Yeah, I think yeah. it would be, I think it would be great, and it's a, it's a great way to learn, too. I don't know. I, I like hands-on learning. Mm -hmm. Okay, what about, uh, <laughs> what about this? this is kind of a funny one, but uh, should volunteers be paid? No. It yes. On, it depends on what you're doing. It depends on what you're doing. Like, what if you're planning, like, a huge program? It's like a stipend. It's not like an hourly wage. You, you can know? pay. If it's, a it's, it's a stipend. No, then that's why you're trying to It's like a gift. It kind of like defeats the purpose. What's right? the difference between a paid volunteer job and a job? Yeah. I mean, yeah, I don't think that makes any sense. Yeah. I think it's, it's, I think it's the same. Yeah, it's exactly. Deep. If you got to think about that. Well, <laughs> <laughs> just, you know, what's, because what's the job difference? Because you got set hours and volunteer, you know, you can tell job, them this one I'm coming. <laughs> yeah, I could see, I could see a little overtime. bit of money for transportation, maybe. Like, let's say you need to take the bus somewhere and you or don't like have food it. or something. Or, yeah, or maybe like something for lunch. But, but, the, but ultimately, to get paid the work for work is like a snack. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you get carrots and crackers. Okay. <laughs> no more. Uh, <laughs> well, so, I mean, I guess it depends on what you're doing. Okay, what about uh, international volunteerism? I touched on this before, but I think it's so, so, so important to be able to kind of just open up your mindset, look at what else is out there in the world that really, really makes you understand your own culture a lot better. I, I, think, travel, go ahead. I, I think that's what Travel Abroad is for. I think that when it comes to volunteerism, I definitely think that we need to be focused here more. Like, we live here, we're trying to uplift the community that we live in here. So that, I think that should be the main focus. No, I, I can, I kind of agree with that, Mike. And then I also see, you know, what about your volunteering? So unless you're in one of these paid volunteer programs, <laughs> Um, chances are you have to pay your way there. So it's an international thing. Some people can't afford it. <laughs> Some people can't fit it in. And so that would go back to the possibly making it part of your, your curriculum. But I, I don't think it's feasible for all people. Yeah, I think it's great if yeah. you do it. That might there's for sure. so That's many. You have to be realistic about it. Yeah, yeah. and there yeah. are so many more, more things, like students. Mike said, that are right here that we should be focused so on. The preceding program was produced by the University of Wisconsin in association with the Big Ten Network.